the 2025 offensive tackle class. Is it good? Is it bad? Let's go ahead and discuss. I'm going to give you my top 10 heading into the college football season, but stick around until the end because I'm going to talk about my guys who just missed the list. At number 10, I have a Johnny Cornelius out of Oregon coming in at 6'5", 310 pounds. He actually spent three years at Rhode Island before transferring to Oregon last season where he played 14 games at right tackle and the dude has ideal tools for the position ideal build ideal length plays with really good power as well he is tough to fight through and plays with a very good anchor the hands and the leverage are pretty darn good with him as well strong heavy hands delivers uh just strong strikes and does a good job climbing to the second level and he does so with bad intentions the nfl absolutely loves that he's pretty flexible as well he sinks well gets good leverage the play speed's pretty solid when moving vertically, and he also moves pretty well when dropping back in passing sets. He's got a nice kick slide. However, there are times where maybe he overcommits or oversets with those uh, kick slides. Again, the nasty demeanor. The NFL is going to love that. He uh, truly has that barium mentality. However, he's a bit a little stiff as an athlete. Like the movement skills, the lateral agility, the the change of direction. It, it just hurts his ability to go play out in space and beat defenders to the spot or beat defenders to his landmark. And penalties, man. Penalties have been a big thing with him, man. He's a bit heavy-footed, and defenders can get him with a well-timed inside move. This has resulted in him reaching and holding, reaching and hooking. 19 penalties the last two seasons. At number nine, I have Ernest Green the third out of Georgia coming in at six foot four, 320 pounds. He was initially a four-star recruit out of the 2022 class. And last year was a first-time starter, played all 14 games at left tackle, was an uh was on the SEC all freshman team. And the dude is as strong as an ox, man. He is powerful. He packs a lot of power behind his punch. He also has the leg drive to move piles. And he plays with that little bit of nasty in him, which you love to see. His grip strength is almost impossible to break free of. And kind of feels like a fire hydrant with legs, man. He's got a bit of a compact build at 6'4". And he, he just consistently plays with good leverage. But also, he's actually got pretty quick feet. Like, he just never stops moving his feet, whether it's in pass protection or on initial contact. Uh, the balance and the quicks, I think, are fairly solid with him. And he, he can be a fluid mover and he does a good job of using keeping his feet under him and staying upright. However, it's a when it comes to his physicality, it's kind of Jekyll and Hyde with him. And like he has the strength and the movement skills to absolutely ruin someone's day. However, what we've seen on tape, it, it, you just don't see that killer instinct at the second level you don't see it more times than not i really think it's more of a football iq than it is an effort issue i think it, it's just he, he doesn't exactly know what he's doing or where he's going when he does uh get out in space or get to the second level also the hand usage is a little less than desirable i wish he would take more advantage of his uh length and and his strength, man, because the dude is incredibly strong. And you just see him attack with wide hands, opening up that strike zone, opening up his pads, and just relinquishing the initial leverage he established. Also, coordination, man. It doesn't feel like his upper body and lower body are in sync. And this sometimes gets him off balance. Like, he has really good balance. But there are moments of shakiness or him just on ice skates. But I think he's got the ability to be a third round player. I kind of see Jamari Sawyer. This isn't your Broderick Jones. This isn't your uh, Amarius Mims. I feel like it's more of a J Jamari Sawyer and a guy that could end up kicking it a guard because while playing at left tackle, he did play with tight ends next to him. So he was virtually in that Georgia offense kind of already playing guard, just that left tackle because of the protection he would have on his shoulder. Real quick, I gotta give a shout out to today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. I absolutely love Underdog Fantasy because I love football, and now that the football season is 
far and away. It doesn't mean my betting season has to be because they do all kinds of sports, whether it's baseball, basketball, esports, even. They got you covered, whether that's weekly best ball or my favorite, higher, lower on player props. So if you sign up at Underdog Fantasy using promo code BROSHMO, then they will give you a first time deposit up to $250. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So if you're going to go and bet, bet with Underdog Fantasy, use promo code BROSHMO. Take advantage of this offer, but please. Bet responsibly and bet within your means. And number eight, I have Josh Simmons at Ohio State coming in at six foot five, 310 pounds. He was a four star recruit coming out of high school and decided to go to San Diego State, where he was a starter at right tackle in 2022. Decided to transfer, played left tackle last year for the Buckeyes, and did a relatively solid job. He's got the length and the strength, ideal frame for the tackle position. He has very solid upper body strength and displays good pop behind his hands. Uh, His initial strike just packs a good punch. And his arm extension is very powerful too. He he makes it tough for defenders to really, really get in when when he's able to extend. However, he does another one of these guys that plays with real wide hands, like the hand placement overall could be better. And he will stop his feet on initial contact. Just that kind of leads to speed rushers being able to get past you relatively easy and puts you on the back foot. However, he does. He is a nasty down blocker. Like He truly is, man. He has the power to wash defenders out of the run game. And he does so with little effort. He is a people mover and he does a good job combo blocking. Uh, where you just you chip that first blocker and get straight to the second level. And when he gets that to that second level, watch out. Things can get scary. He's also a very smart player. Gets out of his stance pretty smoothly. Avoids oversetting. Not exposing himself to inside moves. And he has very explosive or a pretty explosive first step that helps him contend against wider alignments. However, penalties, man. Penalties have been an issue man he really struggles time in the snap like there were a handful of times where either he was too early or too late he wasn't called for a few of his false starts last year but still between that and the hook and holds 25 penalties the last two years so uh, it's a lot there there is also his ability to play out in space a, a bit of a question mark like he just lacks that first and ideal footwork when playing against speed rushers he does a good job of getting broad right and making them have to go around him however he can do a better job of pushing defenders past the pocket he doesn't have really the movement skills i think for a wide zone blocking scheme why i kind of have him as a gap slash inside zone type of tackle and number seven i have josh connerly jr out of oregon coming in six foot four 304 pounds he was a five-star recruit coming out of high school and he became a first-time starter last season where he started all 14 games at left tackle and the movement skills are really good with him he is a great athlete natural kick slide displays really good flexibility when getting leverage he's got the feet to be able to really mirror any defender and he just gets to the second level quickly and he could he's also good as a puller he moves well laterally long arms quick hands he just has desirable length for the position has room on his frame to add more mass plays with a big motor man there's a lot of fight in him he keeps driving those legs through contact which i always say it's one of my favorite things because i think regardless of position anyone who keep continues to drive their legs through contact it translates it just truly truly does man he continues continues to fight even when he is on the back foot he knows how to die a slow death against power rushers and will buy time for his quarterback even when he is losing the rep he's just relentless to break free of however he definitely needs to bulk up man like there there are times where powerful strikes will knock him down well, we'll not just put him on the back foot, but knock him to the ground. There, He also overextends, a little nasty habit you'll typically see in the college game where these guys just get out ahead of themselves and just 
makes it more likely that they can get Toroed or uh, just whiff on a block altogether. And it doesn't help that he also does this at the uh, in, in pass protection as well. Also, tax with really low hands, man. Like, his hands just sit too low before engagement. He gets swatted with relative ease. He he is quick to re-engage, but sometimes it's just... It, I'd like to see a little bit more power in his hands. So I'm very excited to see him in year two. Got a third round grade on him. At number six, I have Anthony Belton out of NC State coming in six foot six, 336 pounds. And he kind of feels Ken McWanu esque when he was coming out. I don't know what it is at NC State. Maybe, maybe it's just the jersey, maybe it's the coaching staff, but. He, he's big, he's strong, and he shouldn't move the way that he does. But he was a zero-star recruit coming out of high school and went to Georgia Military Academy for the first two years. Uh, they did cancel the 2020 season because the Rona, that's when he decided to transfer to NC State and became the essentially the full-time starter last season. Though he did start, I think, like the first eight games. I think it was the first eight games in 2022 but like i said this dude's got scary power scary power he has nfl strength already and he he combines that with just very violent hands like then good luck man he, he, it's like a brick going through a car windshield however i will say i wish the grip strength was a little bit better or a little more impressive but i think that's just really in relative to the, the, the power profile he brings to the game and the movement skills are really good. He comes out of the snap shot like a cannon. He's very effective at combo blocking and he just gets upfield in a hurry. And it's just surprising how quick his feet are. Like I, I never see his feet stop moving on contact and his ability to mirror defenders even out on island are better than you would expect. But another guy whose hands are just kind of wide, man. Like, he's just inviting guys into his pads, and it almost looks like he's going to bear hug the uh, defender, the rusher, and just sometimes he'll also play with his hands low. So I'd like to see better hand usage uh, in general. And he does uh, the occasional whiff, a guy that will play over his toes once he gets to the second level, and he'll just miss on linebackers. There were more whiffs on tape than you'd like to see, and I get that he wants to ruin someone's day, because he's got that type of destructive power. But he needs to reel it back in, man. He really, really does. But at the end of the day, man, I, I really like him. Uh, at NC State, a team that runs a lot of inside zone and uh, gap concepts. I think he'd be ideal for one of those schemes in the NFL. Got a second round grade on him. Might be a little high right now. We'll see how the process goes for him. Coming in at number five, I got Ariante Urshi. Out of Minnesota, coming in at six foot six, three hundred and twenty-five pounds. Former three-star recruit from the twenty twenty class, and didn't start playing football until his junior year of high school, where he played offensive tackle and defensive end. He also participated in track and field, doing all the strong boy events like javelin, shot put, discus, and he actually placed fourth in the Missouri State Championship for shot put, and was became the full-time starter really just this past season though he did play in every game in 2022 but made second team all big 10 and the dude's got great length really good upper body strength like he's legit got pythons for arms and another guy that just hits like a brick through a car windshield typically the first at the point of attack uh he just sucks the winds out of the sails of any pass rusher with his first strike and you really saw that in the Ohio State game. It was a very impressive showing for him. He's also a nasty run blocker. Like, def like legitimately, defenders are at his whim. He's got strong grip. He can latch on and take defenders for a ride. He can just mow them down. He's a pancake and machine and a people mover with impressive leg drive. And on top of that, man, he is a big freaking island to get around and Honestly, the movement skills are are fairly solid too. Like he's pretty explosive out of his stance, gets a good depth in his jump set, and his wingspan just takes up a lot of ground, man. He is able to
to stall the strongest bull rushers and takes up enough space to slow the speediest pass rushers. However, at six foot six, you're gonna worry about leverage. He does have the tall boy problem. Just he struggles to sink and anchor and pass protection, making him susceptible to like the speed to power rushers. Also can be a little bit too eager to get to the point of attack and can get caught lunging. And then he is also a dude that occasionally oversets. And man, once he doesn't have elite lateral ability. He's a little bit bigger, so you shouldn't expect it. But it's fine enough. Like his opening kick slide sometimes just oh, takes up too much ground and he opens up himself to inside moves. On top of that, just doesn't use his hands well independently. He's kind of just a, a two-arm striker and he will sometimes stop his feet on contact. But there's a lot here. Like watching that Ohio State game really was like, wow. This could be a guy that we were talking about in the first round currently. Top 50 grade. But yeah, look out. At number four, I have Jonah Savanea out of Arizona coming in at six foot five, 330 pounds. So another big boy was only a three star recruit coming out of high school and was an immediate starter for the Wildcats, where he started the first 12 games of his freshman year at right guard. And then this year, he started 10 games at right tackle, three games at right guard. And yeah, he could end up playing guard, but I, I think I, 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 he's got the movement skills to keep and stay at tackle. You're going to hear some people maybe throw like a uh, Troy Fatanu type vibes out there. But the dude's built like a house with legs, just a massive human being that moves really well for his size, plays with quick feet. Almost looks like he's gliding across the field. He's someone you can leave out on an island, and he gets to the second level relatively quickly. The grip strength's pretty darn good as well, as he's able to get his hands inside. He's also able to drive defenders back with good explosive leg drive. And once he latches on, he's really tough to disengage from. Good awareness as well. Does a good job of picking up stunts and extra pass rushers. Just so fluid that... He can, he's able to get in front of defenders. His Marin ability is just really good. And he's got that alignment versatility where is he a guard? Is he a tackle? Might only be the right side. It's yet to be seen, but I haven't seen him play on the left yet. I'm kind of curious. Uh, I'm not aware as of yet if Arizona plans on moving him to uh, left tackle this season with Jordan Morgan now gone. But my big cons with him is just like where's the pop man like he doesn't have that nfl nasty and just isn't a finisher as a blocker he isn't much of a striker uh he might lack some length as well which will lead the whole hey he should probably kick inside but we had that debate with stinking troy fatsun only to find out he's got like 34 inch arms so we'll we'll see with uh Savinea. but also does look a little awkward dropping back like, not the most comfortable when dropping in pass sets. He's definitely more comfortable moving forward than backwards and just can look a little clunky at times. But fortunately enough, the, the guy's move, like, his just flexibility, his explosiveness, his burst it, it, it is good to make up for that lack of, I guess, fluidity to him. He's another cat that I kind of have on the outside looking in when it comes to being a first rounder. Let's talk first rounders, starting with number three, Emery Jones out of LSU, former four-star recruit out of the 2022 class. Had 12 starts at right tackle as a freshman, made the SEC all-freshman team. And then another 12 starts this past season where he made second team all-SEC. And he's coming in at 6'6", 322 pounds. He's long, he's strong, he plays with heavy hands, got good pop. Behind those hands, he can win in a phone, uh, phone booth. He absorbs contact really, really well. He's just powerful at the point of attack. And he's a fluent mover. Like, he does a good job mirroring defenders. He effortlessly adjusts to defenders in pass protection and just gets moving in a hurry when in the run game. And he combo blocks very well and could get to the second level. Again, in a hurry, he plays with that urgency. I like that. Hand usage is pretty darn solid as well. Just good extension to keep defenders uh, away from his frame, away from that strike zone. He always prepares his uh, offhand for that next strike too. Like 
It's like he, he can hold a guy back and then reel back for the haymaker, and it could just be definite. However, it does feel like sometimes he protects with blinders. Like he can be late to recognize stunts and blitzes. Fortunately, he's quick enough to at least be able to get a hand on those defenders, but really not much more right now. So I'm hoping to see a step up in the recognition. And he stops his feet on contact. Not in love with that. Like there seems to be a disconnect with his hands and his legs. While delivering blocks, he'll just stop his feet on an initial contact, get knocked off balance, and will sometimes become a lunger in the run game. But I, th this, the him along with the the next two guys, I'm fairly confident are could are probably instant starters in the NFL. At number two, I have Jones's teammate Will Campbell out of LSU coming in six foot six, 320 pounds. He was a former five star and was a starter at right tackle all four years of high school. And then he comes to LSU and was an immediate starter at left tackle where he made the freshman All-American team and was second team All-SEC. Uh, all Started all 13 games this past season at left tackle. Made first team All-SEC. The dude is a very fluid mover. Like, he moves exceptionally well for his size. He looks, uh, looks like he's gliding out there when pulling. He is quick to get to the second level and just really good combo blocker. Displays really good footwork. Always keeps defenders in front of him. They keeps that head on a swivel, looking out for extra blitzers uh, or uh, stunters and whatnot. So I like that. He's able to reach them in time to make a difference and not allow that pressure to come in and uh, unsettle the quarterback. And he's a very functional player athlete very functional play strength like he, he he is strong like he doesn't really exert that dominance i would say and that's going to be one of my cons with him but he will not be pushed around he rarely loses balance and he rarely gets pushed back into the quarterback man he, he's an effective run blocker and can clear the way and wash defenders out of the run game how however man i just i just wish we would see a little bit more of that physicality because I, I know he has it there but his hand usage dude's not a striker i get it he's more reactive with his hands like he's got good grip but and uh, he's got good grip he prefers to keep like keep defenders close and like close to his pads like i just feel like he could do a better job of swatting defenders away and his stance is tall as hell man like He's a good athlete. He could sink well. He's flexible. But just that stance, it's like he's starting from an upright position. And it causes him not to consistently get good leverage, which results a little bit into some waste spending. But yeah, that was probably my biggest gripe. We're probably talking about a top 10, top five player in this class. Then at number one, another five star recruit in kelvin banks jr out of texas coming in at six foot four 324 pounds he was an immediate starter there at texas and this past year was a first team all big 12 and the dude is just he's a brick house built with legs he's compact he packs a serious punch he fires off the line of scrimmage really well and he does so with bad intentions always looking for someone to bury the strikes are hard the feet keep moving through contact. I love it. And he plays the leverage game really well. Being a little shorter than most tackles, he just gets good leverage naturally. However, uh, I think he does display also good flexibility. And just the dude's light on his feet, man. He moves extremely well, whether it's vertically, horizontally. He can track down defenders at the second level and just keep them in front of him. It almost looks like sometimes he's playing basketball and like guarding these defenders it's kind of wild so it's like defense playing defense it, it's it's fun it's fun and another dude that keeps his head on a swivel like he will look out and does a good job of halting loopers stunters and uh guys of that 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 kind but does attack with wide hands like it more so he's just looking to bear hug guys he had six penalties last year a lot of them were holding calls uh, and he is a bit of a lunger at the second level, but really for me, it's like Will, it's like one A, one B with him and Will Campbell. It's just I kind of like the physicality a bit better with Banks, and that's kind of why I have him 
at number one. But let's go ahead. Let's talk about some of these guys that just missed the list. So let's open up talking about the Clemson tackles because I really like Tristan Lay actually quite a bit. Like he has some raw tools and there really wasn't, it just wasn't enough consistency in his first year as a starter. Though I feel like he, he could take that next step next year, but golly, like the tools are really, really good with him. And he also has like the flexibility to play guard or tackle. And then there's Blake Miller, which some people might be surprised that he didn't make the list. Like it's just, man, he needs to add play strength in the worst way. Like if he adds some play strength, then okay let's go but he just doesn't attack the run game with the same ferociousness i guess is the word i'm looking for as he does the passing game but i could see him being a uh, big riser he's stinking like stupid young uh coming out of the 2022 class so might not even be someone who comes out uh next year but i i do like his hand usage and whatnot but yeah, at the end of the day, I, I feel like both those guys are like early day three tackles on the outside looking in. They got to prove some things this year. And then there's West Virginia tackle Wyatt uh, Millam, who's got a long frame, moves extremely well, just lacks high-end traits. Uh, and it feels like he will get kind of lost in the shuffle there. But had a really good year this past season for West Virginia. And we'll, we'll see how it goes moving forward. It's just, I don't know, man. Maybe it's just the helmet. Uh, I get Colton McKivitt's vibes, which, I mean, that's as day three as day three gets. Uh, Wisconsin tackle, Riley Malman. Uh, dude's tall, gigantic, 6'8", 320 pounds. What I put here is like, he's got some traits, but right now just he's just too technically unsound to be considered anything more than a project, which I, I feel like is fair watching his tape last year to be, I mean, to be honest, like he should have had a full year as a starter in 2022, if not for the season ended injury. But last, so last year was more of a learning curve for him. But the, the, the dude is a, he's stupid strong, being a former tight end, I expected him to be a better athlete not to say he's a bad athlete he's not but i expected to see some better like quicker feet uh just better movement skills uh being a former tight end but yeah we'll see jack nelson is also back for wisconsin as uh he he just feels day three i had him as a day three if he decided to come out in 2024 he didn't Said he's back here in the 20, what, 2025 class. And he's a good athlete, functional strength, very quick, but plays tall, plays off balance, and placement is not ideal. So another guy that needs to kind of work on some things. And the last mention here is I'm very excited to see is JC Davis, who was initially out of New Mexico. He's going to be at Illinois this year stupid good play strength just stupid good play strength i don't think he has like the the athletic ability at least uh from a lateral perspective to make it necessarily in a outside wide zone blocking scheme and if you're gonna if he's gonna stay attack on the nfl he's probably gonna be more of a like a a, a guy that's gonna be playing gap and power concepts or you could just kick him inside a guard at 6'5", 320. I think that's totally plausible. But I'm really excited to see what he looks like in his first year of the Big Ten. But that's it for me, man. If y'all want to check out some of my other ranking videos, I got them down here. Or you can check out my deep dive series, which I'll be continuing this Friday. You can check that out right there. But as always, until next time, be easy, my friends. Later.